Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, today on the Embrilliance Lunchtime Learning, we are going to talk about adding stippling to designs using Embrilliance Stitch Artist. So this can be done in all levels of Stitch Artist, and we're going to first of all talk a little bit about stippling and then how you would add it to put around design. So let's pop on into our software and we'll show you how this is done. Here I am in my empty and brilliance program and I am going to make sure that I go into Stitch Artist. So when I'm in my software here, the program all looks the same. This is our platform and I need to make sure that I go into create mode because stippling is creating stitches, which is a stitch artist function. So when I go into create mode and I will be in stitch artist level one, you see that we have our drawing tools here. The stippling stitch type is shown here, right where my mouse cursor is, the one that looks like a little stippling square. So that's the stitch type. Well, in order to create stitches, we have to draw some sort of object. Now, most of the time when we want to create a stippled object, it's probably going to be square. So from our flyout here, where we have our drawing tools, we have the options of creating different shapes. And I'm going to choose the square rectangle shape because that's the easiest way for me to draw a square on my screen. I will put my mouse cursor where I want the top corner of the square to be. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard because I want it to be a square. If I only, if I didn't hold the shift key down, it would make a rectangle. But holding the shift key down when you pull your mouse cursor along keeps it in the square shape. I release my mouse button and I have a now a square shape on my screen. If you look in your object pane, you'll see there's your square shape and it has the properties of being a line drawing. So there's no stitches assigned to this yet. Once I have my shape, I can click on any stitch type. And for today's project, I'm going to click on the stipple. That fills this entire shape with stippling. So if that's all you wanted to create, look how easy that was. Click hold to draw your square, add stippling, and there you have it. Now, stippling has properties. So if you look at your properties pane here, we have ability to choose different patterns of stippling, such as the drunkard, curvy, leaf, or geometric. Let's choose geometric just for fun, and you see it adjust right here on the screen. You can also adjust the spacing, and that is the spacing between the rows of stitching area or stitching lines that are here. So when I move this slider here and move it up, the stippling gets a little bit further apart. So these are just some of the adjustments that you can make to the stippling that you have on your screen in this object. Now, a lot of times you may want to, let me make this spacing a little bit smaller again so that it's pretty normal. So there's three and a half inch spacing. And I maybe would like a hole in the center of it. So how can I put a hole in the center? Like as if I wanted a design to go around a design. Up here on our drawing tools, we have our, there's a little button here that says add a hole. If I click on this button, go. It, it just gets rid of the um, uh, stitches that we had there. I will go to the pull down arrow and let me choose a circle this time. Left click and drag to create a circle. Release my mouse button and watch what happens. We have our square with a hole in the center. So if you wanted to, if you wanted a consistent square block with a consistent circular hole and add multiple designs so it's always the same, you can, you have that, it's already done. So easy to do. So let's, this is the properties. Oh, and by the way, those properties still for stippling can still be changed. So if you decided, oh, I would rather have the curvy, you can change it because you have 
your space here. That hole in the center, I made a perfect circle or oval, but if you wanted to adjust that, this circular shape has nodes on it. Do you see those circle dots there? If I grab a node, left click and drag and release my mouse button, that reshapes the hole. So just think how easy it is. Uh, hopefully these are, this is making the gears work to see how simple it is to adjust stippling in a hole. So let's go and start from sc scratch. I have a design here. It's a little cherries design to go on my fruit quilt that I'm working on. And I would like this to be in a block with stippling, not in a circular shape, but to be kind of drawn more close around that cherries. First step, I'm going to go to my fly out, click on the square, put my hold down my shift key, left click, drag, release my mouse button, and it already put the stippling in. Let's go back to artwork here because I don't want to I don't want that stippling to show. I want to have just my artwork right here. Now, one quick thing, when I open that design of the cherries, it's automatically centered in my hoop. If I click on this line object that I just created, do you see that green square? And it's not exactly in the center because I really wasn't that careful. If I put my mouse cursor on that green square, left click and hold, I can adjust it so that I can move my square exactly where it is I want it in the hoop. Now, if while it's selected, I go to select mode here at the top. I can click center and that will automatically center it into my hoop and I don't have to worry about things. So both my square and my cherries are selected. But now I need to go back into create mode to create a shape around my cherries. So I'm going to, there's a few different ways that you can do this. So I'm going to show you just one simple way that may be easier since some people have trouble drawing. I'm going to basically do it the same exact way that I did by adding the circle. While this line is selected, I'm going to go up here to where it says add a hole. I'm going to go to the flyout menu and I'm going to choose circle and I'm going to click hold and draw my circle just so it sort of looks like it's around the cherries and release my mouse button so that I can see Aha! It is, I do have a hole. You see that there? And all I need to do is reshape this by selecting a node, moving it so that it is creating a shape around my cherries. Now you may be thinking, whoops, I'm getting, I'm not able to click on the node here. I'm probably a little bit too far away on my screen. How can I get it to hug? Get a little more closer, not be this amoeba type shape. Well, I'm going to put my mouse cursor on the line. And do you see how the cursor turns into a pointing arrow with the squiggly line? That means if I double click on that line while it's like that, it adds a node at that spot. And that node is an adjustment point. So I can now click on it and move it and reshape those handles so that it is actually going to create more of a huggy shape around what it is that I want to do. I am a little too far away from my mouse, so I'm having a hard time clicking on my nodes. So make sure that you get nice and closer so that you can actually see where it is you are clicking on and not having to fight so much like I am with my screen here. So putting your mouse cursor on the line, double clicking, move it in, reshape the node. Double click on the line, move it, double, move the nodes, maybe add double click. And look, if you notice, I'm creating this really kind of easy going, funky looking shape around my, my um, cherries. And it has, that's basically creating a funky hole in my square. All I have to do now is click on this line, apply my stippling, and there we have it. We have stippling going around our cherries. How easy was that? Steps into doing this is basically number one, draw your square that you want your quilt block to be in. Step number two, click on add a hole. 
And I like to use the freeze shapes and get something that's close. The circle one can be easily be reshaped into create non-circular shapes. And once you have something that looks close, apply your stippling, save your work, and you are good to go to your embroidery machine. If you are looking at your stippling here as when you, after you have your hole, you can always go through and say, oh, I really wish it was a little further apart and make, make your adjustments to it. If you said, oh, I wish I could adjust the size of that hole, click on the node and move it and your stippling adjusts. How easy is that? So there you have it. Easy, quick way on how to create stippling in Stitch Artist Level 1. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember that these videos are recorded and also uploaded to our YouTube channel. Have fun creating with your software. Thank you.